Hey guys, Lou here. Welcome back to Acorn Hill and welcome back to our channel. Today, Acorn Hill is one year old. A year ago, I started putting together anything that I have been doing that interests me and put them on video uh, to create content and create material in the hopes of sharing and having people learn something new with the things that I do and the little knowledge that I have throughout the years. And a year ago, during the height of the pandemic, I decided to put all material and all activities that revolve around our property, Acorn Hill. The channel is all about building, DIY, entertaining, gardening, homesteading, and stewardship. Basically, getting back to the earth and learning what we can do to be a more sustainable household and for our property to be a step closer to being not only sustainable but well managed as we consider to be the current caretakers of this property during our lifetime. So to all of you out there, we really appreciate you being a part of the channel and being our subscribers and friends of the channel. You are the lifeblood and the fuel that keeps this channel going and we owe it all to you at least within this last year that we've been having fun putting all these content together. Okay, now on to more fun and more videos. This year, to celebrate our first year anniversary, I have been putting together snippets and segments of how this entire Acorn Hill homegrown series has evolved into, well, coming from a problematic area in the garden into a productive area where we have built raised beds, placed in organic compost and now it's time for us to really plant and show you what we've been doing as we become more sustainable. Throughout this video I will walk you through the different stages of development of this area from when we first started planting our brassicas or our cabbage family type plants and other plant material that we have put in the garden bed also cover for you the drip irrigation system so that we don't have any problems with constant watering and that can keep our watering to a minimum. One of the first plants and vegetables that I planted into this garden bed, and you can see it in this clip, these are Cavallo Nero kale. They are Italian style kale and they're very easy to grow from seed, which I did about eight weeks prior to this clip. I grew them in basic seed potting mix that I placed inside these plastic cups, placed in about four or five individual seeds, and after several days, it started germinating pretty well and pretty fast. The seedlings that I'm showing you on the foreground of the shot has very good root systems that now has enabled me at this time during the clip to plant them into this garden bed. Notice the black tubing that's right on top soil, the network of drip irrigation. These are quarter inch black poly tubing holes at six inch intervals that will evenly water these plants. Another good tip before planting cabbages or any plants that belong in the brassica family is that you want the soil to be firmly tamped down. This means that prior to digging the hole, you want the soil to already be formed into the garden bed. Planting the individual starts should also involve tamping the roots down so that in the event there's winds and breezes the roots are firmly into the soil it will prevent them from rocking and getting out of place as they grow after planting them in a grid pattern the next thing to do is water them very well watering them in will allow the roots to really search for all that moisture that is well draining and going all the way down to the bottom of this bed and into the native soil that is under this Ugal Coulter type bedding. Incidentally, and if you are interested, I have created a series on the Acorn Hill homegrown veg garden that I will also be putting as links down on the description box of the video. And I will also put in some flashcards up on the screen. That way it'll be easier for you to refer to these videos as I share with you the type of gardening and bedding and building of these garden beds and how I turned this area in previous posts. You may be wondering what is this white netting that I have put on top of this garden bed. Well, this is a custom made mosquito net that I am placing on top um, to be supported by 
two by twos that I have cut to about two and a half feet tall. Uh, this netting is important for any type of cabbage plants that we will plant because they attract white butterflies. For some reason, smell all the brassica and all the cabbage scent being given off when we handle these plants. What they do is a swoop right down. It may look nice because there's butterflies flying around your plants and they may look like harmless insects. But what they will do is immediately land on these uh, plants and will start laying eggs. And when they lay the eggs, these little caterpillars as they grow will be the pest that we want to prevent eating away and eating up all the greenery that we have worked so hard in growing from seed. From the start, I wanted our vegetable gardening to be all organic, if not completely organic. And this is one of the best ways to prevent using any synthetic or any chemicals that we think may kill the insects that are harmful. But really, if we were to use that, that also kills all the beneficial insects in the garden. Moving right along on this little tour of the vegetable garden, this is our 3x3 three three raised garden bed. And in this bed, I have uh, grown from seed Swiss chard. This is the classic Swiss chard that has the yellow coloring, the ruby red coloring on the stalk. From the time I have put in these Swiss chard seedlings into the garden bed, they have been receiving regular high nitrogen organic feed. And look at the size of them. At the time this clip was taken, we have already been harvesting leaves and stalks as a cut and come again type of crop. We use them for breakfast and also for soups and they have really served their purpose well. The leaves are extremely crunchy and hefty and they really give off a nice nutty flavor. From the time this clip was being taken, whereas before I had that bird netting that I initially placed on top of these vegetables because the birds may peck on them and start tearing them off, I started taking them away because now I will be putting that custom mosquito net right on top of these veggies. Not only will it protect um, the vegetables from being eaten by the birds, but also it will allow for a much more uniform look to all the beds that I will be preparing for the rest of the growing season. And putting on the net couldn't be easier. I have this two and a half foot um, two by two pressure treated wood along with bamboos uh, that I have secured right on each corner. That will act as the extra support so that all of these netting will not sag in case of winds and in case of any moisture. And who knew that mosquito nets can really provide a practical help in the garden? After putting them on tightly and totally on these garden beds, the garden beds now look neat, they look organized, and now are well protected from any pest. Here's another shot of the veggie garden. We're looking from the two 3x3 three three garden beds. And this shot really gives us an idea of how well we have developed this area and grown these vegetables. Those cabbages that you see, those are the mammoth type cabbages that I am still growing and waiting to become more and more hefty. They will be harvested sometime in the fall and at the time this clip was being taken, they are now forming the cabbage heads that I'm excited to really try out this coming year. All organic, still being fed by high nitrogen feed and that is really what's causing all of them to um, grow and, and become very robust. Two weeks after that first clip that I showed you when I planted these Cavallonero kale, look at the size of them, look at how they're growing. Next to the Cavallonero are kohlrabi. Well, they are usually round and all these spikes with leaves come off from the side. But going back to the Cavallonero, look how beautiful these things are. They are not studded with holes. The leaves are healthy. They are really dark green. We have been harvesting them from the time this clip has been taken and uh, they are the cut and come again type. So more bang for my buck, grew them from seed. This is one gardening practice that I will start delving into more and more year after year. Here's an overhead shot of the kohlrabi that I mentioned to you earlier. They're planted right next to the kale. They belong in the same cabbage family. What it looks like right now are stems with leaves. But as they continue to grow, 
they will form a bulb that will grow on top of the soil. And that's the part of the kohlrabi that they say you can eat fresh or cooked. My first year to grow kohlrabi and I will give you an update and a feature post on the kohlrabi in future vlogs. Just a brief side note on this double-sided cedar planks that I use for the raised garden beds. It gives me comfort and pleasure to know that this is not treated, knowing that the soil is not going to be contaminated by any chemicals or any synthetics, and that will allow for a much healthier soil medium for all the future vegetables and the current vegetables that we are growing. Moving over to the next garden bed, I wanted to show you these red radishes also being grown under these mosquito nets and they are doing really well, doing their best and doing their own thing, enjoying the soil that I placed them in. Planted in between the radishes are lettuce and arugula. I made sure that this bed is packed full of greens and packed full of root vegetables, uh, root vegetable being just the radish alone, but the greens that they also um, provide are good for salads and good for the type of cooking that Kat and I do in the kitchen. Taken a week after I showed you last the Swiss chard and a status report on how they have grown, look how wide those stalks are and look how big uh, these leaves have really grown. Swiss chard is known to be a very good ingredient when you cook them. It gives off a nice fresh nutty flavor and for me I want to take advantage of that flavor and so the bigger the vegetable, the bigger the leaves, the better it is for when we add them into our own cooking like sautés, um, soups, especially for soups they are really good combined with uh, the cavolo nero kale, uh, a little bit of butter and a little bit of parmesan cheese and that's, that really is the ticket. And here again is another shot. Of course, I got to show you another shot of the cabbages that I am very much looking forward to weighing when I start harvesting them. These are supposed to be very, very big. And uh, I'm curious to know how, how big I can grow them this year. And so we will have you in for the ride. So definitely hang in there and we will give you an update in the fall. Here's a clearer shot of that garden bed containing all the arugula and lettuce and all the other vegetables uh, packed in this six by three garden bed. Let me tell you what we have in this garden bed. From the left side of it is the long row of the arugula. Next to it is lettuce. Next to it, moving over to the right, those fine fronds that you see, those are fennel and I was able to insert a few of them in there. So hopefully we'll get some. That would be the third row coming from the left. The fourth row is again another row of arugula. And moving over to the very last row, you can see some of the fronts of the fennel also peeking through. Now, you've been hearing me telling you that I've been fertilizing them organically, but there's a certain way of fertilizing these types of vegetables. I have two types of fertilizers that I use for this garden project. Number one would be the long-term slow-release fertilizers that I have used. These are pellets that I got from the store. All-purpose, well-balanced, and all organic. The slow-release fertilizer is what the vegetables will be feeding on throughout the entire growing season. They will be dissolved and processed by the microbes and the soil and all the um, beneficial worms that are already inside this garden bed. That's what's going to be manufactured that will be taken up later on by the vegetables. The other type of fertilizer that I use is the liquid form. These are the instant uh, feed liquid fertilizers again all organic that are high in nitrogen because these are leafy vegetables that i'm trying to grow for the ones that are root vegetables particularly the radish what i use there is a high potash feed or high potassium feed uh, also in liquid form and also organic i follow a basic philosophy in fertilizing vegetables Liquid are for instant take up of nutrients and the solids or the granules or uh, the slow release ones, those are for the entire growing season for long term use. I think that this batch of Cavallo Nero Kale is not even six months old. I think they're doing quite well this. They're currently growing in organic compost. 
being fed regularly with high nitrogen organic feed, this will continue to grow and we will continue to harvest and pick from the stems all the way up until February of next year, if you can believe it. So for a couple of dollars for a pack of seeds grown and sown from seed, transplanted into a raised garden bed that we've prepared for and planned for ahead of time. This will be the start and a good jumping off point for us as we take a step closer to being a little bit more sustainable in our household. In theory and in reality, I have never been a seed grower and part of that I guess is for me I have a hard time uh, waiting for the seeds to germinate, especially when you live in a place where there is winter and everybody wants to start their gardening with from seed during December waiting for them to grow in very tricky situations and climates between the inside of the home since I don't have a greenhouse yet uh, it has really turned me away from growing plants from seed however one of the garden gurus that I follow and have been watching for more than 10 years now has given me the encouragement and the nudge on the back to start from seed again. I considered that this year and by golly look at how it has become from seed to growing them as little seedlings to pricking them out, planting them in individual plugs and placing them in this garden bed. Building this garden bed is one of the great rewards that I did this year not only for our garden and to develop our property but also personally. This conundrum challenged me to really think on how I can develop this area from a problematic tricky area into something where we can have order, rhythm and structure producing a garden room that really is productive not only for our household but for our neighbors when we share them our crops. That pleasure and that reward from being a productive builder to a gardener is something that I'm enjoying thoroughly. Here's hoping you enjoyed our video for today guys. We have made it to our first year on this platform and yay to all of us. Like I mentioned earlier, our subscribers and friends of this channel is the lifeblood and the fuel that continue to allow us to produce more, be inspired more, and to share lessons and mistakes that we learn along the way which really adds up to our adage here on the channel, learn something new every day. Acorn Hill is all about stewardship. Our continued goal is to become a step closer not only to being sustainable and responsible but really becoming the type of stewards that we need to be as we keep this property at least during our lifetime. So do me a small favor, continue to like our videos, share our content to your family and friends, continue to chime in and put in your questions or comments, uh, correcting me if I need to be corrected and giving me suggestions on how I can improve different techniques and different ways of keeping and living here in our property. For now, this is your friend Louis, excited and raring to go as we all enter into the next phase of Acorn Hill and we'll see you back soon here on this channel. Bye-bye for now.